I'm Adrian from The Rotus Show. Uh, today I'm here to talk to you about power backup systems. When you're flying your helicopter, the last thing you want is to crash it due to some mechanical problem. Helicopters in general have very little backup or redundancy in them. The radio link is one of the things that you really, really do not want to lose. Uh, generally, these days, they're pretty robust. The power supply side of things in the model, not so much. So how does it all work normally then for your conventional setup? A separate battery, sometimes with a regulator, is plugged into the receiver to power to supply it directly. This is how all the nitro stuff works and some bigger electrics also work like this as well. Uh, this enables 2S LiPos to, be, to give you high voltage um, to your high voltage servos or uh, if you use a 2S LiPo with a regulator, you can then guarantee you get a nice constant voltage through to the uh, radio system. But if you have any problems with that, you lose your power, you lose the radio, and it's coming down out of control. Um, with an electric model, you can have a BEC uh, built into the speed controller. Uh, so this takes the uh, battery voltage from the main power battery that's, uh, that's running the motor and then steps this down to the five or six volts that your servos need. Uh, you can also run a separate BEC as well because some speed controller BECs are uh, not really up to the job. Uh, but again, there's no redundancy here. If you have a problem with the connection to the main power battery like I did last week, or um, a, a connector issue or anything like that, uh, there's no redundancy at all. If you lose any one of those components, um, then you, you lose all control of the model and it's coming down fast without any control whatsoever. Now, if you, can, if you get into a situation where you've lost main power to, to the motor, either through uh, an engine quit on a nitro or a speed controller problem or the main battery dies, um, then you can, if you've got radio, then you can auto it down. So you still maintain a control, but without... Um, but you, just without the main power. So the, the safety implications there are much, much lower. So guaranteeing that you have power to your radio system at all times is one of the most important things. So how are we gonna do that? Well, there's three main options on the market at the moment. They vary in, in price and features. The first one is to buy yourself a little 4.8 volt nickel metal hydro pack, uh, the N-loop or uh, equivalent thereof technology is very, very good for this sort of thing because it has a very, very low um, loss of charge over time. Now, the advantage of this is that you plug uh, it through a switch into the receiver pack. So then the normal BEC uh, system that you would have running or the normal battery system that you have running still runs the pack, still runs the receiver, uh, but this Eneloop pack with the switch uh, runs it in the background so if there's ever a problem it's on a completely separate bit of piece of cable uh, into a socket onto the receiver and it just carries on running things should there be a problem. The problem with the Eneloop style of doing things is that there's no warning as to whether you've got a uh, an issue with the system when you switch it on because you you don't know if you switch the um, the inner loop pack on first, so then the receiver powers up, initializes your uh, flyby system, and then you plug the main battery in. You don't actually know if the BEC in the main battery for the main battery is working because it was already powered up. And the same thing vice versa. If you plug the B the main battery in first and power the receiver off the B off the BEC first, and then switch on the inner loop pack. Again, you don't know if the inner loop side of things is working. So it's not a true fail safe system. You could, in theory, you could add a uh, battery voltage monitor from the good old days. So if you switch the inner loop pack on first, it will read one voltage of say five volts, 5.2 volts, depending on its exact state of charge. And then you could switch on the, you could plug the main battery in and then that would uh, up the voltage then up to your main BEC voltage of say between 5.5 and 6 volts depending on what you've got it set to. So then you know that they're both working. 
but obviously that's adding an extra cost. Um, you're looking at uh, about f between five and 15 pounds for the inner loop battery, a switch is six to 15 pounds, and uh, the battery voltage, uh, the, the voltage monitors uh, between 10 and 20 pounds, somewhere around there. So it, it's still a, it's a reasonable amount of money. But uh, it does have the advantage that it's uh, very easy to mount because the only thing you have to worry about mounting is the is the switch. You need to be able to get at the switch. Everything else you can tuck away, out of the way, out of sight. It's quite good like that. Next we have the Scorpion Backup Guard, also known as the Bug. It simply plugs into an RX port and you switch it on and off as and when you plug in the main power. The nice thing about it is that it is completely independent from the main power system and there is an LED to tell you when you is on or off. The downside is that it doesn't self-charge like the Opti Guard does. Uh, however, you have a separate charge port and the LED will flash on and off uh, when it gets below a certain level. The price point is a fair bit under the Opti Guard and a little bit more than the inner loops. Next up, we have the OptiPower Ultra Guard. This thing really is the one thing, fits all, does everything, belt and braces, device that will just do everything that you need it to do. It automatically switches on when it sees power from the main power system. And if the, uh, and it sits there monitoring the power system at all times and will charge up its onboard LiPo if, uh, if there's enough power available. And then if there is a fault with the main power system, it then flashes its big, great big old ultra bright LED so you know when there's a problem. Now I could go into the, the full on tech details of this thing, but it does so much, we'd be here all night. Just, just go and have a look at the specs yourself. It really is belt and braces. Obviously that does come with a price tag, you know, 40 pounds, including the ultra bright LED. Now you can get the lesser kits, you can get the board on its own, so you can then plug your own LiPo into it. It just uses the 2S JST um, plug, or you can get it with just the PCB and LiPo, and you can fit as many LEDs as you want. So it's, it's, it's quite flexible in what, you, in what you want to do with it. But as I say, it does come with a, it is the most expensive one of the three. But it's also the most, uh, the most featureful as well. So there we have it. The three different ways of doing it, each with their own pros and cons. And uh, make up your choice, pay your money, and uh, hopefully it will save you a crash, if not worse. So here's me signing off. Next month we have Matt Botos on the main show to talk about everything Synergy. Thank you very much and good night.